three. Ooh, I stopped it just in time. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> Hi, Roshni. How are you? I'm okay. We've not introduced ourselves. Oh, oh my God. Oh, we have. Well, we've introduced each other. So we're Rosh and Deb, and we're. Shoot from the hip. Flask. <laughs> Flask. <laughs> do you think we'll ever get professional and actually one time do a no. proper intro? <laughs> no, I think people think we, we're fudging it now. Um, yeah. And we're genuinely not. We really just cannot do this. Um, there are more important things in life than, than getting that introduction right. But, <laughs> so. Well, Christmas. It's Christmas week. You're wearing dealy boppers. I am just too tired. Yeah. Um, I, it doesn't mean I'm not feeling any less festive. I, I am. I'm... I'm probably not quite as festive as you. I'm a little bit bar, bar humbug this week, I have to admit. But, yeah, here's what it is. Mm, yeah, I've, so I've still got three days left of work to go. Me too. In, in the day job. Uh, kids have now finished. They finished today. Um, so we're at that pivotal moment where things really start kind of up in the pace now in the, the preparation and leading up to the big day. Have you done lots of baking? You always do lots of baking. No, that's the that's the bit that comes next, only because I want it to be as fresh as possible, so that it holds as long as possible, um, so that we ha we have it for Christmas. But with the, there's only uh, five of us for Christmas Day this year, uh, so I want to make sure that whatever I put together like has still got longevity beyond that. So that's why I'm going to cut it as fine uh, as possible. I am waiting for those pictures of the Santa bread. The Santa bread. Santa bread will happen. Yeah. You need yeah. to it's explain to everyone now. what Santa <laughs> bread is. Do you know what? I don't I don't even know where it came from. I, I literally I must have seen it on Pinterest. It I just I can't even remember. Um or someone must have tagged me in something, went, go on, Deb, give this a go, because they know that I like experimenting in the kitchen. Uh, but essentially it's it's just like a it's like a sweet brioche style bread with with um butter um and a little bit of sugar in there uh, and you you know you prove it in exactly the same way but then what you do at the end is you then shape it into a big santa face um so it's got like his eyes and his nose and it's got uh, his hat with the little bobble hanging over um and then you twist all of the bread to make his beard at the bottom um, uh, and then you prove it again for about another half hour and then put it in the oven. Uh, and then afterwards you kind of like glaze over, uh, the top of it, but you, um, use a bit of food coloring to, to do like the red and the, um, little nose and <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, but the, the danger is when you're working with bread and something that's going to rise, however it wants to rise, I'm, I'm yet to actually make one that looks like Santa. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't want to be rude, but the ones that you've sent me, and we've known each other for a little while now, so you've sent me a good couple over the years, yeah? yeah. Um, the taste, let, let's just say I've never tasted one, um, but they've always made me laugh because <laughs> they are nothing like what you would expect. I'm always polite and say, oh, wow, and make all the right noises, but yeah. inside I'm saying, Debbie, that looks god awful. What are you doing? <laughs> but it's tasty, and, the, and it's 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 one of our traditions we have in our household. So we make it on Christmas Eve. It's normally the last thing to go through the oven um, before heading to bed that night. So it fills the house with really wonderful aromas, and then we leave it out overnight so that it um, uh, cools down and, and firms up because you should never never tear bread straight from the oven because otherwise it turns back to dough so we kind of leave it out and then it's there waiting for us when we get up in the morning and we normally just leave out like a block of salted butter as well and just have a little slice with it to go with my um pork pie are you making a pork pie i'm not making a pork pie but we have pork pie for breakfast on christmas day normal people have like pancakes or yeah. eggs uh -huh. or salmon. Tons, smoked salmon yeah. scrambled yeah. egg debbie has pork 
pie. And again, I have no idea where the tradition comes from. I'm yet to find someone else not related to me that does it. <laughs> uh, but it was always a thing in our household. And I remember it really vividly as a child. It was the one time of year that we ever had pork pie and it was always for breakfast on Christmas Day. Can gin go with pork pie? Because um, yeah. I think yeah. I need a drink. I yeah. need a drink. Yeah, I it, feel like I've confessed it, too much already, Rush. So can we yeah. get a drink on the go? <laughs> yes, please. What are we both drinking the same thing though? What have you picked to drink? So I, I, this should come as no surprise, bearing in mind that we've been talking about this product um, over on Instagram. Uh, then we, we picked the same drink. We picked the same drink. <laughs> well, either that. Well, we've been talking about two ish. Set one separately and one kind of together. So we've been mm. talking about two ish. So I've picked the one we've been talking about together. Yes, same. Okay, you go first. Right, let's go for the reveal, shall we? So for those of us that uh, uh, those of you that haven't uh, seen or, or heard of any of our work that we do on Instagram. Uh, one of the pieces of work that we did last week was to promote a product uh, which is called Reverend Hubert, which is this most striking bottle uh, that we have here that's been out for, what, three, maybe four years now? Yeah, um, I, came across it, I came across it a good few years ago um, when I went down to London to, was it the, the something... Christmas gift fair or something like that. I can't remember what mm -hmm. it was called um, at the Olympia. Olympia? Mm. I made that up. Is that a place? I don't know. Yeah, it's a place, yeah. And and it, the first stall I walked in into the, into the hall and the first stall that was there had the most striking bottle. Um, and if you've never seen the Rev bottle, it's, it's almost kind of – it's like a stained glass, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It it's, is. It's yep. together like a stained glass, but in a way that tells the story of of the brand. Yeah. So yeah. the Reverend has two sides, uh, a good side and a slightly Cheeky. naughty side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's a fab story behind it as well, you know, and every – almost every single detail that's on here has got like a little bit of a story associated with it. Like, um, the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the plums, uh, that are on the bottle, <laughs> there is some say. citrus on the side. The, um, plums. the two plums. Two plums. Yeah. And which actually, right. To look at, all right. For those that you are watching on video, you know, you could, you could argue that this is, um, you know, it looks like one of two things um actually three if you count plums as well <laughs> it's on the cheeky side isn't it it's on the cheeky side it's on the cheeky side uh whereas on uh on the on the holy side we have a christmas tree with a little star on top um and a little halo on the top i love the little halo that's on the uh on the good side as well um but yeah so i think a couple of reasons that i've chosen it one how many times has this been described as Christmas in a bottle? Uh, quite a lot. And I actually have, um, so last year, the Re the brand Reverend Hubert um, did a version for Fortnum's um, and they did mince pie gin liqueur, mm -hmm. um, which is, I think, quite similar to this, but not quite the same. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, and and that for me is Christmas in a bottle. Essentially, mm -hmm. it just is absolutely brilliant. And you know, this is this is virtually the same Christmas yeah. in a bottle. It's the yeah. season. Yeah, undoubtedly. Yeah. And the thing you might—I mean, you may have seen it on TV as well. It's been uh, across on a everything. number of like, the food and drink channels as well. Every Endor single food and drink channel. I mean, like, how much celebrity endorsement has it got? I mean, it's—we've got, haven't we got like Gary Barlow going? Oh wow, that's amazing! Has it been on Holly and Phil? Has it been on Holly and Phil? It's been on literally everything. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think Andy Clark is the one that's had it most recently. So yeah, literally couldn't get more endorsement. Well, in the trial, I've opened so. a brand new bottle, like I think you yeah, have as too. well. 
Um, it does smell absolutely. You just get that cinnamon smell straight off. It's just mm. all the spices. It does. It really is good. Um, all, the, all the spices, but they're, they're aromatic, the real Christmassy style ones. So we're not talking about heat or anything like that here. We're talking about all of those beautiful spices that go so wonderfully with um, citrus. Because for me, the second the second aroma that comes through is undoubtedly citrus. Um, and uh, yeah, if you um, if you speak to Thomas, the founder, he'll tell you all about the uh, the lemons that he <laughs> lovingly hand peeled. Um, the the sheer volume that went into. Um, I think we need to get him. I think we need to have him on just to tell us about the lemons. Definitely, we should. We should. We'll, we'll podcast about talk the lemons. Do you think he might I, talk to us about the plums as well? I, th I think he'd love to talk a little bit of cheeky plum action. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, what measure? Uh, well, I mean, it has to be at least 50. It's a liqueur. Come on. Okay, so I will go. I've, I've got my big, my big measuring jug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Russia's got a jug. There we go. Only pure, purely because, like, I, I just, I think my jiggers are in the, um, in the dishwasher, in all honesty. Don't tell anyone I put my jiggers in the dishwasher, but they, that's where they've gone. <laughs> Life's too short. Mm. Now, it is technically a school night, uh, so there's so many different ways that you can serve this. You can serve it cold, you can serve it hot in a toddy, uh, you can serve it with some nice sparkling wine for um, an extra little fizz, which is probably what I'm going to do maybe on Christmas itself. Uh, tonight I'm opting for ginger though. Uh, Me I too. Want a long, longer drink. I want it to be Me refreshing. Um, and put those spices. Let's have it. So I'm just going to get this. And I old. also don't want to. I don't want to overdo it because, like you said, I mean we're both working right up until Christmas. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I need to still be on my A game. Or on my game. I don't want to say A game because I'm not sure I'm ever on my A game. But you know, there we go. And I'm matching you this week with the sparkly nails. Ooh. Okay. Fabulous. Okay. So other reason why we picked this one is, um, so we put out an amazing deal on Instagram last week. Uh, yeah. And there are some incredible gift sets uh, this year Yeah, for the first time. One of them's with a gorgeous little jigger. Um, which yeah. I have got, but I'm not going to show it only because I want to showcase the other, the other wonderful gift set um, that has a special meaning for us. It has. So we are what shoot from the hip flask. Yeah. Uh, with the flask being a little bit cheeky, you know, it was very much a play on words for for us and everything. So go on, Debbie. What have we got? I, let, let's do the reveal. So for those that can see it on camera, we are going to hold up the most gorgeous, gorgeous oh, hip flask. Oh, mine is a reflection. Just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it's me in the reflection. <laughs> uh, there we go. There is it on mine. And, it, and it's, uh, it's it got the markings on the front of uh, the Reverend himself to yeah, with match one... in line with the bottle. One plum. With with a singular plum. Um, and it still has the Christmas tree with the star on top on the other side. Um, but how gorgeous is that? And very, Great. very honoured to have been sent this um, specifically because we are shooting from the hip flask. And therefore, we now have the official hip flask. We have hip flask. Absolutely. So I feel like every week we need to put something in it. But... It'd be cheeky to put something other than Rev in the hip flask. I mean, to be to be fair, having a having a wee sip of um And of yes, the we, we, every we call, week. Well we call it Rev, don't we? Because it, it's, we call it it's Rev. we've become quite familiar with. So yeah. to us, you know, the Rev is a bit like family. Yeah, it's got most it. definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And actually there's one for all seasons because the summer cup uh that again went through a bit of a rebrand this year also incredible 
Um, you will you will never go shopping in the supermarket for Summer Cup again if you have uh, the Reverend Hubert version. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm enjoying that for sure. I might have to have another. I did. I did bring two cans of little ginger with me. So, yeah, yeah. I'll probably be going in for a second. So, so when we were chatting last week, uh, we did the we did the white mulled wine challenge last week. We did, and I have drank that mulled wine, and I have bought more of that white mm. wine um, to make more white mulled wine, and. It feels like a tongue twister to make more. Anyway, um, it's it was very good. Mm. It was very very good. Did did you manage to make some for the bearded wonder? Oh my! Honestly, you don't, like seriously. I, I mean, uh, the bearded wonder has always, like me, been um, a lent a little bit more towards red, and uh, has always enjoyed that too. But I tell you what, we had. Um, we had some friends over for Sunday lunch last week uh, who'd driven um, a very long way uh, and through the treacherous snow conditions that we'd had last week. And um, I decided to make up some more of said white mulled wine um, as, a, as a little warmer for when they got here, uh, just as we're finish, finishing off the roast dinner. Uh, and the, honestly, the bearded wonder could not get enough, <laughs> like to the, to the point where he was also insisting that we bought more bottles specifically of the same wine so that it could be entirely recreated exactly the same. Well, that is definitely a plus point for sure. Yeah. 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 Def definitely <laughs> a testament. Yeah. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. So, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, went down an absolute storm. Uh, hence the reason that uh, another few bottles were added to basket um, to enjoy some more over the festive period. And we said we'd talk more about other festive drinks that we've either got on our shelves or come across. Um, and I've been shopping. I've definitely been shopping. Um, and I'm going to full disclosure here. I was very excited to pick something up and I told you I had picked something up mm -hmm. and when I've pulled it out of the bag, Debbie, it isn't what I said it was. <laughs> I've picked up the wrong fricking and I, yeah, fricking bottle from the supermarket shelf. <laughs> now from Halloween, we have become fans of the Marxologist ready mixed Marxologist. cocktail. Yeah, yeah, the ready made cocktails that Marks and Spencers yeah. do. And, and again, I'll stress, we're not endorsing Marks and Spencers. They don't endorse us, all mm -hmm. of that stuff. This is purely because we actually do like the product. Yeah. Um, and and I've had their espresso martini ready mix in a, in a little bottle as well, which I think is, is pretty good for, yeah. uh, for an espresso martini. Um, I, full disclosure told Debbie I was buying a bottle of the Slow Grony. So for anyone who doesn't know, a Slow Grony is a Negroni made with slow gin. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yep. I've pulled it out of the bag today because I haven't looked at it since, in all honesty. And what have I bought? I bought the Blueberry and Elderflower Gin Bramble. Not... <laughs> The slow crony. <laughs> and I'm sure this is very nice. I really am sure that this is very nice. But it is but not. It's not this. <laughs> what I wanted. It's not the slow crony. <sighs> I'm very so, sad. So the good news is it's still available. So you're going to go off and buy the real thing. Uh, and we'll regroup on that one. But in the meantime, what we've also been doing is picking up a few other things. Uh, also raiding the cupboards for what we already had, actually, because um, there's a there's a number that we've had over the past couple of years that we've just still got some left that it's worth a little shout out, really. So yeah. what's first, Rosh? What have you got first? Uh, I'll I see whether we've got the same. If not, we're going to have a few that are the same, a few that are different. This is this is true. So so to start with, on 
to start with, I'm going to go non-alcoholic because on Christmas mm-hmm. Day, I've got um, someone who's coming to me who's driving. Yeah. And then my sister is coming to spend um, the day with us as well. Or, well, more than just the day, but my sister's coming to spend Christmas with us as well. Um, and she's decided that she'd rather not drink. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd been out to my Christmas do and one of the things I tried at my Christmas do to just avoid drinking too much all at once um, was a non-alcoholic amaretto sour. Ooh, that sounds good. And I have to admit it was delicious. And I looked at all their ingredients and I checked out the bottles and what they used was Liars non-alcoholic amaretto. Well, it's called amaretti. Mm -hmm. Um, So I've bought, I've bought this. It's sealed still because once I open it, I have to use it within two weeks. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm not going to open it until I I, I kind of need to. <clears throat> um, and I've bought a basket full of lemons, um, mm-hmm. and I've got um, egg white alternative. Yep. So um, the aquafaba stuff, um, and I'm going to make my own amaretto sours. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm still going to enjoy that kind of, and I've got real amaretto. So you know, if I really fancy, you know, a a, a proper drink, I, I will have one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I might actually have my first sober Christmas. And do you know what? That doesn't fill me with dread. So mm. okay, I'm okay with that. Um, so I've got that for Christmas. What have you got? Oh, uh, I so I, I mean, other than mixers, I've got nothing that's alcohol free uh, this year. <laughs> but I the great it. news is, you know, I'm not going anywhere. You know, we're we're staying in. Um, no, no driving, nowhere to go on Christmas Day itself. So we're just going to kind of relax into the day. So first up, uh, so normally first thing in the morning, we'd always have a little bit, a little cheeky little books fizz. I've um, got that. <clears throat> I've got that too to have with my breakfast, but this time I've have you gone for a pre-made or are you going to make your own? Well, so normally, so the, so the one that I've had the past couple of years, <laughs> I've had a pre-made one that I've actually really enjoyed uh, in comparison to, you know, your normal average two quid a bottle one. It was a slightly more expensive one, uh, but it was a Clementine one, but I, I just haven't been able to to source it this year. Um, so word on the grapevine is I think my sister's got a couple of bottles from last year, so she'll be bringing them over with her, but that, and unless it's still made or not, um, then that, that could be our last year on that one. Um, so, and I've not been able to find kind of the equivalent. So instead I'm going to mix it up a little bit. And, uh, while we're on the topic of uh, the slow gronies, I picked up one of the bottles of the Let It Slow from Arts and Spencer's. Ah, and I've missed out on that because it's sold out at my local M&S. Um, but I had that last year, Debbie, and it mm. is delicious. You will love ace. it. Ace, ace, you ace. Will ace. absolutely love it. We finished it last year. Um, and, I, and I know we're sticking a bit on the M&S, and, and I promise we'll move on. But I've got their ready-made box fizz, which is pomegranate and blood orange. Oh, so that's, see, that sounds like a good... Yeah. Yeah. And it's it is mainly juice. Mm-hmm. Um but I mean it's still alcoholic, but you know, uh it's four percent. Yeah, but it's something so you need some, you need something light to start the day, otherwise you're not yeah. gonna last, are you? We're gonna have this with our um we have French toast every mm-hmm. Christmas um mm-hmm. for breakfast. It's a, a baked French toast that my sister makes. Um we do it the night before and it just has to go in the oven yeah. in the morning. <clears throat> And uh, so that'll go perfectly with that because it'll cut the sweetness of all that maple syrup and, you know, everything like that. So I'm looking forward to that for sure. Um, And then I'm wondering whether I'll, I'm sorry, I'm going to have another one of these. Um, That that rev went down way too too fast and too nice. Um, I'm wondering if I can slip in a cheeky little alcoholic something Mm. And I'm looking around me at what I've selected to kind of show you, Debs. And I thought I'd remind you of one that we tried last year. 
which we both loved. Um, and that's from Tappers. And Tappers are, well, I want to say local, but they're not local to me because they're, they're in the Northwest. Um, so everything in the Northwest, as you know, Debbie, is is how far from me? It's just, <laughs> just up the road or down, up, road. up or down. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this one is just is just down the road from me in uh, towards Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the they do a figgy pudding Christmas gin. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I've drank most of this bottle. There's not a whole lot left, so I won't be sharing it with anybody. So with two yeah. non drinkers on Christmas Day, this will be perfect for me mm -hmm. to crack out because I don't want to share it with anybody, quite honestly. Yeah. Do you, know, do you know the only thing that's making me a little bit torn about how I use this one? How? What? Did did, did you try the pudding um, that that came uh, the on the recipe card that came with it? I don't like Christmas pudding, Debbie. Ah, oh, my days. So uh, designed by Simon Rimmer, good friend of Tapper's. Uh, he did a, a chocolate figgy pudding and... Oh my god, it's insane! <laughs> so, are you saving yours to make chocolate figgy pudding? Is that what you're saying? Uh, quite possibly. As uh, well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out how much is left in the bottle to make sure that there's enough left for a drink as well. Because I don't want to put all of it into uh, the pudding. Some goes in the pudding. I think some in the sauce as well. So I don't want to use up the last of it because it's precious. Um, but as long as there's still enough left in there for a drink as well, um, this one goes particularly well with the Clementine tonic. Oh, that's so good with some fresh fig in there. That's really yeah. incredible. Yeah. Um, I think I did a, oh, I think it was an Alexander as well that we had with it last year did when you? we did the yeah. um, Masterclass. I, I'm not a big fan of creamy drinks, so mm. I didn't choose the Alexander. I think I did something tea related with this. In all honesty, I think I put, I paired it with, I can't remember, um, but I'm pretty sure I did something tea related. Mm. Mm. It does. It works well with kind of those stronger, bolder flavors for sure. Yeah. But then also, you know, like you said, the citrus just just, just kind of rounds it a little bit. Mm. It is really nice. I'd I'd highly recommend kind of seeking it out. But there are other figgy pudding gins as well that are also good. We've, I know you've got this one because this <laughs> is one of your. This is one of your. I think you own every single bottle that they have ever made. Almost. I think that I think there's two special editions that have ever existed that I don't have at least a shot left in a bottle. And the brand we're talking about is Tarquins. So we'll have to do a whole episode of podcast just on Tarquin so that you can tell everybody about your insane Obsession. collection. Yeah. Obsession. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they yeah. do a Cornish figgy pudding gin, which is, it's actually lighter than the ta the Tappers one. It is different. So while they're both figgy pudding gins, they are, they are incredibly, incredibly different. Yeah, um, this be. one, I remember turning into a negroni mm, figroni 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 yeah definitely. um and this definitely goes with more of those kind of jammy figgy um flavors so if you have like a you know if you can't get fresh figs and you can have you can get like a fig conserve you could probably mm. make a really good kind of fig martini with it Ooh. um you know or something that or do you know what? You, could you make a fig cosmopolitan? Ooh, that might work. That might work. Or I tell you, I tell you what. If we're if we're staying on the topic of Tarquins, uh, so what I have got <coughs> this year, they've released this one, which is cranberry and orange. I didn't buy that. That sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. I do have the cranberry and orange from St. Giles that yes. you were yes, 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 on yes. fire a few years ago, but I cannot find my bottle in my mass of shelves. Oh, oh you... that was a good one, that one. That yeah. was brilliant. So that, I can't speak for the Tarquins because I haven't tried it, so I will let mm -hmm. you speak 
that. But if you want to set anything on fire and still drink it, <laughs> highly, highly recommend the St. Giles because it was absolutely stunning. Yeah. Um, what did we even make? God knows what we made. But we, we made a little boat and we put the... Was it the, the one where we put the, where we uh, carved out the lime? Was it that one? Yeah. And then we poured yeah. it in there? Yes. Was it a lime? Was I it... can't remember. There was three that we did. We did three Flaming Friday sessions and that was the first one that we did, wasn't it? I think it was a clementine that we carved out. It could have been a clementine. Well, wasn't we that... A, a Sainsbury's recipe. It was, do you remember? It was a yes. Sainsbury's recipe for a flaming something or other. Yeah. And we swapped it out with for this, whatever they re recommended, we swapped out for the cranberry and orange gin. Mm. And it was, it was delicious. <laughs> yeah. Um, and really fun to do, actually. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we should revisit the flaming series because we worked our way up, didn't we? We started on uh, we started on the gin uh, and uh, quite a flavoured one. We then did one with a rum in the middle. Yes, and we finished on actually we did the sea dog, the Tarquin sea dog, because it was a higher ABV and therefore we knew it would create more flame. Yes. And then, but do you remember we couldn't set the first one on fire? The it, first one, because we left it in the pan to warm too much and it burnt off half the alcohol before we lit it. <laughs> we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it properly. <laughs> definitely. Check, please check out St. Giles. Um, and especially if you like a fruitier, if, if you like a fruitier gin, you know, mm. that definitely one, you know, one to go. And if you, you know, if you're not big on kind of the, the spices and you know the, the the sort of that the spiciness from a figgy pudding or a um, or even the the winter gin liqueur because they are full on with spices. You can taste the cinnamon. You can taste kind of you know that there, the, there's potentially some cardamom or you know something Clove, in kind nutmeg, of yeah. You can taste them because they taste like Christmas. Mm. Um, and if that's not your thing, and you know you do like um something fruitier than the saint giles is definitely for you and oh why didn't we make a cosmo maybe we did look i tell you what we what we should do is we should go back and revisit the recipe one we should remake that one just to remind ourselves how wonderful it was and then no two, one is come up with something new us. no one's gonna watch us flame a thing <laughs> bill um, at the end of the day, Rosh, we do this for us. We don't. <laughs> we this do it because we enjoy it. So you know, it's true. We actually, I mean, we'd love it if you listened. Yeah, um, and you know, we're like everybody else, and we'd love our five minutes of fame. You know, full disclosure. Um, however, Debbie and I really do this so that we spend some time together every week and chat rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Right, so before we end up down a rabbit hole, then let's segue. So we just worked our way onto something a little fruity. So I'm going to bring Gower Wassail into the mix. How do you pronounce it? I have it too. I love it, but... Uh, it, that's a very good question. I pronounce it Wassail, but I don't know whether that's right. I, no, I think I read it as like Wassail. I don't know. Genuinely, don't know. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, look at it. It, yeah. I I used it. Like, I'm sure I used it last year, um, and I used it to make a in a, a spiced mold apple. Yeah. Something yes. or other. Oh yes. Uh, it's on my grid somewhere. Yeah. I assure you, it is on my grid somewhere, and it was beautiful. Mm. So for me, that one goes really well with apple. It, yeah, brilliant. And when it's got apple in it, so I mean that, and that's kind of the whole point of the celebration um, is uh, it's around the celebration of the um, apple crops and the apple apple harvesting. Uh, Seriously, so that's the inspiration. Oh right, did I did not know that. No, because yeah. I, I don't pay attention or read things or. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I did, but I, I tell you one of the things that I love about Gower, um, not uh, mainly the people, right? So um, lovely. Uh, oh my God, some of the most incredible, down to earth, brilliant human beings, and phenomenally talented, uh, and understated. So you know, um, in, incredible, incredible, warm, kind people. Um, so uh, my first ever distillery visit visit to a distillery was actually to the gower was um, it yeah yeah uh and it was very early days for those guys too so um i won't go into the full story now that's a whole other uh love letter to gower uh, <laughs> that i will recount sometime uh but no shan and andrew are some of the most kind and talented people yeah. um that i've encountered on the circuit um, and that's why, uh, I mean, thankfully, every single drop of everything they've ever produced, of which I think I've bought one of each, um, then uh, they're all absolutely beautiful. So when they come out with something randomly stunning like this, it's an absolute no brainer to just kind of get involved. Um, I think I have to be honest and say I bought it for the bottle. Uh-huh. The bottle, I just saw it. I think I saw it on your feed and I saw it on a couple of different feeds and they, it just looked stunning. So I bought it. Yeah, it is. No, it 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 really is. Um, yeah, so uh, I will definitely be enjoying that. So, it, where where does it sit um, flavor wise? So it's still it's quite close to more of a traditional uh, gin rather than quite heavily flavored. Uh, however, from a botanical perspective, then it is honoring um, the uh, the the apple and the orchard style of things, but without any of the um, overly flavours. It's still a completely clear spirit. So it's all distilled um, rather than being one that's infused at the end or has any particular sugar added at the end or whatnot. It is an old Tom, um, but it's probably one of the driest old Toms that you'll encounter. Yeah, I, I like an old Tom. You know, I like that sweetness. Um, and the, there is a brand that we both love that is well known for doing um, old Toms. Mm -hmm. um, which is House of Botanicals that, you know, yeah. we, we, we know and love. Um, we'll, we'll talk, maybe we do a podcast just about old Toms. Otherwise, like you said, I'm easily distracted today and can go down some rabbit hole. Oh, well, tell me about it. Well, before we move on from old Toms then, I'm just going to show you one because I know that you haven't tried this one yet, Rosh, and this is from uh, Dinnerwells. So uh, they sent me this uh, a few weeks ago. They went under a complete rebrand with all, the, all of their bottles um, and they look absolutely gorgeous now. Um, and the reason I'm putting this one in the mix is this is also an old Tom, um, but flavor wise, it fits perfectly with this time of year because it's orange and ginger. Mm -mm. Orange and yeah, I think you can you can be you can overdo it with orange and ginger, though, like if you don't get that balance right, you know, one thing is stronger than the other and then something's completely lost so i'm gonna have to trust you on that one that they've that they've done it just right um <clears throat> while we're on the orange mm. i'm gonna show you so last year i think it was last year it might have been even um the year before i created a mold um a mold gin recipe using apples and a spiced apple gin that I had got, uh, had bought actually from a local distillery to Manchester, which is mm. the, the Four Sisters, um, or Sisters Four, or I think it's Four Sisters. Um, and, and it's run by Four Sisters. They're the Four Sisters of the Seven Brothers, and the Seven Brothers make beer, also in Manchester. Oh. Um, and as a thank you, because they wanted to use my recipe, um, as a thank you, they sent me this, their two Christmas gins this year, and this one is chocolate orange. Ooh, yeah. that sounds good. It does sound good. I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest and say, kind of the, the chocolatey and kind of that sort of gin isn't normally my bag, mm -hmm. because I don't make the creamier drinks like, like you might do. Yeah. But you did on your grid um, a hazelnut Negroni. <sighs> I think. Oh, the white one. Yeah, that was incredible. <laughs> and I thought, actually, if I swap out the hazelnut 
yeah. for this chocolate and orange and maybe top it up either with some extra orange liqueur mm -hmm. or some extra cacao, depending where I was kind of feeling. Yeah. That actually I could do something similar. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely going to come through with similar vibes. Yeah, I really love the idea of that. And uh, so you... I haven't opened it, so I don't know what it tastes like yet, but I'm quite excited to because their spiced their spiced um, apple gin is delicious. And my friend loves their now discontinued cherry gin. Mm, okay. Yeah, so they do, they do produce some really good things. And they also sent me, and we're properly going down the Christmas path with this one, yeah. sugar plum gin. Oh, now it says on the bottle and I'm going to have to take my glasses off to, to read it. It says Christmas sugar plum gin. And it says our, our sugar plum gin is the essence of Christmas with the sweetness of plum and the addition of fig for its honey like flavor with a hint of berry. So I'm thinking I can actually pair this with some fresh cranberries or some sort of fresh mm. raspberry or something like that. That would maybe bring this to life a bit. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds incredible. No, it really does. Um, but yeah, like liqueur wise. So yeah, the, the hazelnut one. Um, oh, this is absolutely stunning. So That's this is the from... one that you've done, yeah. This is the one that I used, yeah, and um, uh, Leanne kindly sent me this uh, a week or so ago. Literally, it came through the door and I had the seal off straight away just because I was so intrigued, just largely because um, normally flavours like this tend to be more associated with, like, creamy serves. So um, I was really intrigued to try it as, like, a clear liqueur to see how well it would sit as, as a clear drink and obviously it ended up in a, in a white Negroni, which was almost crystal clear uh when it came out the other end so yeah it's and it's really really stunning um and that's a vodka based liqueur um, when it came again. out the other end Debbie, do you want to rephrase that um well yeah okay maybe yeah i, d I didn't mean that end i meant the what? the drink <laughs> the drink to, to become a drink <laughs> okay the same end that we're on, not the other end. Yeah, no, no. Then it came out as in it went in the mixing, the mixing glass, glass. <laughs> and it came, came out, out the other end level. into the drinking glass. <laughs> My God! Yeah, no, oh, I don't think so. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna leave that there. Yes, I'm I a child. Uh, I think it's a bit of red rubbing off on us now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that yeah, so that was the hazelnut liqueur, which was absolutely stunning. Um, and then the other thing that made you remember, actually, you're talking about sugar plum, is can you remember not last Christmas, Christmas before, um, you got me one of them really cute uh, Sipsmith stockings. Yes, I have one too, um, a Sipsmith stocking, and because I have one and I love mine, yeah, I bought one. Yeah, 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 and I've, so I have still got a little bit of the uh, the liqueur left in here, so I will uh, be definitely. I think I had doing a little bit something with that, and I'm not sure if I have it anymore. I think I might mm. have actually drank it. Um, all that I think I had gingerbread liqueur. I think it was gingerbread. Yeah, and I love gingerbread. I'm a sucker for anything gingerbread. Yeah. Um, in fact. One of the puddings I've put in, one of the puddings I've put in my online basket to come at Christmas is a gingerbread gelato. Um, and I'm so excited. <laughs> I am oh, so wow. excited to have a gingerbread gelato for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I think we'll have it for Christmas Eve. Can you see I'm already planning? I just want the food. Yeah. <laughs> the food. I know. I'm so orientated. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, um, while we're talking about, we're back on the subject of Christmas puddings. Yeah. Um, I have a new bottle mm. of Christmas pudding vodka yeah. from, from, and I've taken the seal off because I had to smell it. 
yeah. um, from Walworth Farms. Mm. Um, now, last year, I, I, I was sent a bottle, and then I bought another bottle because I drank far too many Christmas pudding Collins. Mm -hmm. um, and when you put lemon, I put a mixture of lemon and orange juice with it, so it was sweet and sour, not mm -hmm. all just orange and sweet and not all just lemon and sour. Um, it's so good. Isn't it? So that is yeah. going to be one of the drinks I drink over the next week. Yeah, so this definitely. So bottle, this bottle might go as well. <laughs> um, I actually, um, I used mine as uh, the flame for my Christmas pudding on Christmas Day last year. Did you? I did, yeah. Oh, see, I don't like, I don't like Christmas pudding. I, I just don't. But I love the flavors that go into it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. there's just something about it. I just, I just love them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And actually this year, so um, I made up my mincemeat to go in mince pies. Um, and I actually used, so I've been using it the last of um, their, so their old brand. Uh, so Colworth um, originally were branded under Stafford's, uh, which is this one here. And uh, I remember the first year that they brought out their, I think it was called Christmas gin to start with. And then they changed it to spice so that it could be available throughout the, the rest of the year. But um, I remember trying that when it first came out. And and I uh, think I've taken a sample out of that bottle from you one one year when I came to visit you. It was, well, I say one year. I've only met you twice in real life. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and one of those times was when I came and stayed with you. Like, we'd never met before. Uh, I'm just going to be a stranger in your house. Um, and I remember taking a sample out of that bottle. Um, mm. And... And I have to admit, because it was called Stafford's, I did think that it was from up here, mm -hmm. from Stafford, um, yeah. rather than actually from Cornwall. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I think um, I think Stafford's is one of the family names from the heritage of the farm. So um, I think what one of the things that I love about this that brand, and if you do get chance soon and you're down uh, in Cornwall out their way, um, they are well worth a visit. Um, and that's because they are one of uh, a very few amount of distilleries in the UK that actually make their own base spirit. Um, so 99% of distilleries will import in the neutral grain spirit, which they then turn into, whether it's vodka, gin, et cetera, et cetera. Um, whereas these guys, uh, they use the potatoes off their own land. Wow. Yeah, that, that which is, is um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, from what I see on social media, then they've got all sorts of different stuff going on there. Uh, these days too so I'll definitely uh, make it back down there for another visit and stuff I did the gin school there as well and made my own gin which absolutely does not compare what <laughs> whatsoever to Steve's but you know um, I gave it my best shot um, but yeah no I'm really enjoying it and like I'm determined to get to the bottom of that bottle so that I can then go and get a, uh, a new one under the new branded the final thing I have um, is something I know you have as well, because this this is when we started and I said, you know, there were two things we were talking about. One we were talking about separately and one we were talking about kind of together and we've talked mm -hmm. about Revel. Yeah. Is, um, is the Craft Gin Club gin. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We're both lucky to kind of yeah. have received. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. I haven't opened mine um, purely because I, I just haven't had a chance. Mm -hmm. How do you pronounce it? Uh, I, well, I pronounce it Graveney. Graveney. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was Graveney or Graveney or, yeah, I just I, wasn't sure. Again, I haven't looked it up. I've just made an assumption. Um, it's, it's made in Tooting in London. Yes. It um, is and it's a festive fair. Fair? Is that how fair. you pronounce it? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah festive fair gin and and I, the reason i say i asked debbie how to pronounce it is because it's spelled f-a-y-r-e mm -hmm. um and because obviously i'm foreign um i don't always know how to pronounce things properly hey i'm from lincolnshire so i don't either um <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Some days, definitely, especially if I'm trying to pronounce moustache. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so um, I've had a couple of serves out this. That So the first one I did was the perfect serve um, out of the magazine, uh, largely because not only was I really excited to try this because it had those real wintry, Christmassy style flavours in there, uh, but it was paired with the new Artisan Winter, London Winter Tonic, uh, which yeah, I really keen to try. They sent the bottles of that in, in, in the box. Yes. Um, the yeah, box yeah. was, the, I mean, I'm, I, this isn't a plug for, well, maybe it is, I don't know. This isn't necessarily a plug for, for Craft Gin Club, but the Christmas box was phenomenal. There was a full-size bag of crisps. Yeah, it was a full size bag of crisps. A bag of crisps. Yeah. Tyrrells, I think. Yeah. Um, and there was there was some Tia Maria. Yeah, and the there matcha. Was, and there was a, uh, I don't think I got, oh yeah, matcha. Then there was some massive orange, dried oranges. Um, and I forget. There was Get something there. else. So, the, so the, the cocktail, which I haven't made yet, is the mimosa. That's um, it. So they came with the Corston sparkling orange and then the, you know, the little syrup um, that they've put together for it, um, which actually, did I, should I save that for Christmas or should I just, no, I think I might just, I might just go for it. I'm going to um, go for it. Um, I, I needed to get this first kind of few days of the week out of the way, in all honesty. Mm -hmm. And I told you that, and it's not something I'm going to, I'm prepared to go through on here. Um, but this is, and you know this, Debbie, this is the first kind of drink I've had in in a little while at the yeah. minute, just because it's been such a busy time and I've had to kind of keep my head. Um, but now as we get closer to Christmas, I, I sort of don't mind losing it a bit. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Um, but yeah, I used the Festive Fair. That was the one that I paired with the hazelnut in the white Negroni as well the other day. Uh, so I've got two things on it now, um, but uh, yeah, definitely more to come. I think that mimosa's uh, it's it's days are numbered uh, for when that one's going to be made up. I am going to be conscious of the time. We're at fifty two mm. minutes, um, and downloading it for no anybody who cares uh, if it goes over an hour is an, a massive pain for Debbie and me. So Debbie, what else have you got? Because I'm done. Well, so bottle wise, I've done, but I have got one little. It, it is Christmas after all, so I've got one last gift to share with you. Okay. Uh, and that is apologies to anybody who is listening only and isn't able to see the video, but I've been promising this for two podcasts, and that is to show you. <gasps> it's the the Nakatomi Plaza. <laughs> The calendar. <laughs> it's the the, the Nakatomi Plaza from Die Hard, and you can Nakatomi see Hans Gruber Plaza. is is down here already. So it is officially less than a week to Christmas Day. And if if this makes no sense to anybody, shame on you. You need to go back and listen to the previous episode, <laughs> not the previous, the previous previous episode. Two ago, um, yeah. Where, where we talked about Die Hard and our favourite Christmas movies and was Die Hard really a Christmas movie and then this calendar appeared. This calendar appeared. So this is the Bearded Wonders uh, calendar and it's going to be the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> year after actually... year. Entirely sustainable uh, because it is simply made out of a piece of very thin wood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> And, and I'm as I... <laughs> two blokes sat somewhere and thought we yeah. will crack fund for this. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. Um, and, and yeah, there are people that fall for it. And then there are the bearded wonder thought, I will give them my money yep. to have one of these. Yeah. Yeah, incredible, eh? I'd rather have a bottle of gin, but okay. <laughs> Uh, Jim, imagine imagine that if you had a bottle of gin and you had yeah. 24 measures in your gin mm. yeah so you had a, a, an, an advent gin bottle and you had one measure a night yeah and then your last one was on christmas day 
and then someone had to buy a Christmas Eve and then on Christmas Day someone had to buy you a new bottle yeah there, so there is there is a distillery near me who have in the past done an advent bottle it was shaped like a Christmas tree and it had the numbers down the side of it seriously yeah I've never seen an advent bottle I, I like the idea but then I think do you know what I'm gonna have the same gin and tonic every day <laughs> Some people like that, though. We don't. Yeah. We, are, we, are, we are unique. Um, but some people like having the same drink and the same gin and tonic every day. There are people that just drink the one brand. Mm. And the yeah. one expression from the one brand. Yeah, absolutely. That's you know what you fine. love. Exactly. Indeed. That's Indeed. perfectly fine. There's no judgment here. Mm. That... That yes, is me. There we go. I feel like I've shared. Uh, and my one final parting gift, again, from a couple of podcasts ago, um, we, we, were, we were attempting to Google during the podcast uh, where the film, the black and white film clip from Home Alone came from, what yes. film it was actually from. Yes. Um, so I have done my research today and I have, first of all, I've watched Home Alone. Uh, and secondly, I've looked at all the trivia associated with it. Um, and it's not an old movie. It was shot specifically for Home Alone. So it's no, not an actual it's movie in a movie. The animals. Correct. It's, it was made for Home Alone. It was filmed at the same time uh, and then just pushed out in black and white to make it look like an old movie. Oh, I just assumed it was like Humphrey Bogart or Gary no. Grant or I don't know who else is old, but, you know, that sort of thing. No, it was oh. made specifically for the movie. I feel very disappointed. <laughs> I feel very disappointed. And just, just to kind of change the subject, have I shown you my Christmas spoons and forks? Have no. I shown you? I feel like I need to show you my Christmas spoons and forks. So I bought these online and I thought we, I could use the spoons for pudding. And they've got, they're like gold spoons and they've got little stars on the top on the handle and little jangly Christmas trees. And this one's a wreath. Wow. <laughs> I, know. I just love them so much. I have to show. Oh, incredible. I can't believe you haven't got the Christmas decoration out. What Christmas decoration? The martini glass. What are you talking the about? The frosted martini glass. Oh, it's on the tree. Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? You wouldn't let me show anybody my Christmas decoration. <laughs> just wouldn't. So it's on the tree, I'm afraid. I'm like, what What are you talking about, woman? Yes, it's on the tree. So wow. that's okay. Well, Rosh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I am suitably revved up for Christmas now. Did you see what I did there? <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Are you going to hide some, are you going to hide something in there? Always. To squirrel. Yeah. To squirrel. I, for anyone watching, I held up the, the hip flask. Okay. Have a very, very, very Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. <laughs> you too, Rosh, and I'll look forward to hearing about what you actually ended up drinking in the day. It's going to be non-alcoholic, but that's fine. I'm going to play music. Oh, there we go. Bye.